fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the early western United States. No outlaw could match his courage or his cleverness, and in time his great fight for justice ended in victory. Law and order reigned on the frontier. The winning of the West was made possible. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on! A well-dressed but hard-faced man in his middle forties was seated at a corner table in the cafe at Grove Center. He looked up as two rough-looking cowhands walked toward him. Then he pointed to the empty chairs at his table and... Sit down. Sure, Mr. King. Thank you. You buying the drinks? You're not drinking now. We've got other things on hand. Well, what'd you find out? It was Jerry, all right. We got the fellow that gave him a lift into town to describe him. It fitted the young'un to a T. So now we know he got this far for sure. Well, is he here? Nope. Must have kept right on going. Maybe he kept on heading west. Confound it. We've trailed that kid for 200 miles and haven't caught up with him yet. But we're getting closer, Mr. King. He must have left this town just this morning. It won't be long now till we get our hands on him. You'd better find him before he gets up the nerve to tell what he knows or it'll be all our necks. You know for sure he's seen us toss his paw out of the saddle over that cliff. Of course I know it. <laughs> Got at him with that bullwhip of yours, eh? Enough to make him talk. And enough after that to make sure he didn't talk to anyone else. We should have finished the kid off along with his old man. I told you so at the time. And have two accidents to explain? Don't be a fool. The law was suspicious enough about the first. But with the kid knowing what he does... It's like having a loaded gun pointed at your head all the time. I tell you, he won't talk. I hope you're right. Look here. I've got that kid so scared of me, he jumps every time I speak to him. And it takes time for a scare like that to wear off. Our job is to get him back before he decides he's safe from us. Do that, and we've got nothing to worry about. Mm, maybe so. Later on, perhaps, we can see that an accident happens to him. In the meantime, what difference does it make? The ranch belongs to Jerry. But I'm his uncle and his guardian until he comes of age. There's nothing in Texas to keep me from helping myself to any part of the estate I want. You've got to give an accountant. Not until the kid's 21. Well, what do we do now? We'll stay here for a while. There's no use leaving town until we find out which way he went from here. There's an empty cabin over on the south side of town. Why don't you make arrangements for us to bunk there as long as we're staying on? That'd be better than staying at the hotel where we couldn't talk free. Who does it belong to? The storekeeper, I think. And I'll see him about it. In the meantime, both of you get busy. Pick up that kid's trail. Yeah, you'll leave it to us. But be careful how you ask questions. I don't want anyone to know what we're after. It makes it kind of hard, boss. You want the law asking us why we didn't get help finding the kid? Well, like you said, you're his guardian, ain't you? Who's got a better right to hunt him out when he runs away from home? That's not the point. If the law took a hand and should happen to find Jerry first, there'd be questions asked. 
How do we know the kid wouldn't get up the nerve to tell the law why he skipped out? The boss is right, Dale. Yeah, I reckon. All right, get along. Abe, you start for Hillsboro. See if you can find any trace that way. Right. And you can head for Harvey, Dale. Uh-huh. I want this whole district covered in every direction. We've got to find that boy. It was after dark that same day that the Lone Ranger and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, were riding toward Hillsboro, a small village not far from Grove Center. A full moon shining overhead made the countryside almost as bright as day, and as they neared a small cottage, the masked man gave a low order. Pull up, Tonto. Pull, sir. Pull, sir. Look beside that window, Tonto. Why, it looked like boy. That's young widow Martin's place. She has no children. Not right. <coughs> Stay with the horses. I'm going to see what that youngster's doing there. Oh, uh, me. Wait. Yeah. Hello, young fellow. Oh, oh gee. Here, stand still. Don't, don't hit me. I won't hurt you. What are you doing here? N- nothing. I'll keep him going. I-, I didn't mean any harm. You live in Hillsboro? No. Where then? Your mask. I don't have to tell you. Please let me go. Wait, let me have a look at you. Those shoes you're wearing... They're just about worn through. Well, isn't that a pretty thin coat to be wearing for this time of the year, young fellow? It, it's all I've got. What's your name? Jerry. Jerry what? That's all. You must have another name, too. See if you can't remember. What's your father's name? Pa, pa ain't living. You haven't told me your full name yet. I, I don't have to. I, I'll be moving on now. You can't go far on foot. How long has it been since you've had a meal? Two days. Run away from home? Just leave me be. I think we'll go inside and talk to Mrs. Martin. If you're from around here, she'll know it. Maybe we can get you a square meal. How would you like that? Uh, I'm awful hungry. Come along, then. Are you an outlaw? No, Jerry. Is that the name of the lady that lives here? Mrs. Martin? Yes, and I think you'll like her. She's well-spoken of around here. Oh. Oh, my. Don't be alarmed, Mrs. Martin. I found this youngster outside your place. It looks like he's been having a bad time of it. Do you know him? Why, why, no. May we come in? That mask. Doesn't mean what you think it does. I, I suppose it's all right. Come in. Thank you. Come on, Jerry. You found the boy outside? Yes. I'd hoped you'd recognize him. I've never seen him before. What does he say? The boy's refused to tell anything beyond the fact his first name is Jerry. Jerry, what's the trouble? We'd like to be your friends. Come on now. Tell us your full name and what you're doing here. No. You mustn't be stubborn, Jerry. I I don't have to tell you. No, of course you don't. It's just that if we knew them, perhaps we could help you in some way. Don't you see? If if I told you, then, then he'd find out. Who would? I won't tell you. I won't. There now, Jerry. It's all right. Here, let me have that coat of yours. It looks as though you've been rolling in the mud. <gasps> Jerry, what's the matter? Well, I just touched his back. Perhaps he's hurt himself some way. Here, off with that coat now. Let's have a look at you. It's nothing. Don't argue. There. Now your shirt. Please don't. If you've hurt yourself, Jerry, you want the hurt to be fixed, don't you? I I told you it wasn't anything. Look at that. (gasps) Those marks. Jerry, how did these marks get on your back? He did it. Who? No. No, if I told you and he find out, he'd hit me again. Please. Merciful heavens, who'd hit a child like that? Those are the marks of a whip. Jerry, you've got to tell us who did this. You're safe now. Don't you realize that? We're taking care of you. He can't harm you anymore. No. No, leave me be. The poor lad. It won't do any good to question him now, I'm afraid. Whoever's responsible for this has terrorized the boy. I'd, I'd just like to get my hands on the beast. I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Yes? Jerry can't be permitted to wander around homeless. I could take him to my camp, but I think your home would be a better place for him. You mean you'd like me to keep him? I know things have been difficult for you, Mrs. Martin, but if you could find it possible... Well, of course he can stay here. I wouldn't think of anything else. Jerry, would you like that? You wouldn't run away again, would you? No, ma'am. Then it's settled. Good. And there's another thing. Yes? It may be that you'll be able to win the boy's confidence enough so that he'll be able to tell you about himself. I'll try. But in the event he won't, Tonto and I'll try to learn who he is. Tonto? An Indian friend of mine. He's waiting for me outside. Oh, I see. Until we do learn more about Jerry, I think it would be best to keep his presence here a secret. Not let anyone know? It's obvious the boy's running away from someone. It's possible that that person is searching for Jerry. If it's the same person who put those marks on his back, he shouldn't be allowed to know where Jerry is until we investigate. Of course, I didn't understand. Do you think you can keep it secret? I have very few visitors. 
I'm sure I can. Very well. Mrs. Martin, your husband didn't leave you very well off, did he? Jim wasn't to blame. I know. I've heard the story. Your husband died before he had a chance to establish himself. Yes. What I'm getting at is this. It won't be easy for you to assume the burden of caring for this boy. Till we know what should be done with Jerry, I'd like to help. We will make out. The supplies on your shelves are low, I see. I don't suppose you'd accept money. Oh, no. You can't refuse to accept some help. I found Jerry. He's really my responsibility, not yours. But I couldn't. Tonto and I are going into town after supplies. While we're there, we'll purchase enough to take care of the boy, too. You needn't and then that. we'll learn why Jerry won't tell us about himself. Almost a week passed. King, Jerry's guardian, had directed the search for the boy from Grove Center, where he had established his headquarters. But as time went by with no clue to Jerry's whereabouts, his impatience increased. One evening, Dell entered the cabin and... They sure covered ground today, boss. Well? But it never had no luck. Blast it all. That kid didn't fly away. Someone must have seen him. If they did, wasn't nobody I've met up with yet. When we came here, we were right behind him. Now, for all we know, he may be in the next state. Confound it, you can't tell me a youngster that age could wander around the countryside by himself without being noticed. You've fallen down the job, and I want results. Do you hear me? Results. Oh, come on, we've been doing all we can. I've talked to folks in a half a dozen towns. I've stopped at every ranch house and every blamed cabin and hunt for 50 miles around. Why today? I even started asking questions of crooks. Crooks? Yeah, masked hombre and a redskin. I'm telling you, Mr. King, me and Abe ain't overlooked a bit. Where is Abe? Why hasn't he reported yet? I've seen him this noon. He said he was going to have another look around Hillsborough. Said he might not get back a little late. What'd he go there for? He's been there twice already. Oh, I know he is. What he told me. A fool wasting his time. Anything else you want me to do now, boss? There ain't. I thought maybe I'd drop down by the cafe. What are they saying there? Wondering what we're doing, are they? Not particular. The folks is mind their own business. We can't stay here much longer without giving a reason. We can't move on until we know in what direction to go. Well, go on. I won't need you any more tonight. Uh, thanks, boss. I've got to lay my hands on that kid. If he ever talks to the law... Well, no use worrying about that, I guess. Time enough for that later. Why in blazes doesn't Abe get here? I'll tell him a thing or two for wasting all that time in Hillsboro. Is that you, Abe? A masked man. Sit still, King. What the... Keep your hands above the table. Reach for that gun and I'll blast it out of your hand. What do you want? I followed one of your men here. Huh? man I met today on the trail. From what he said, I gathered you've been searching for someone. I, uh... A young boy. Did Dell tell you that? Did you expect a fellow like that to ask questions without giving his purpose away? The loose-mouthed idiot. Never mind that. King, I know where that boy is. You do? Where? Not so fast. We alone? Is there anyone around who might hear us? There's no one here. Very well. First, why are you looking for the boy? I'm his guardian. He's run away from home. Are you sure you want to find him? What do you mean by that? Remember, I've met him. and I've seen certain things. What things? For instance, the marks of a whip. I don't know what you're talking about. my guns might be for hire. This is ridiculous. I don't want to... Don't try to smooth things over. I know you're kind. You haven't been keeping this hunt covered up for no reason. But I tell you... I'm wondering if you wouldn't prefer to find the boy dead. You mean... I think we understand each other. You'll have to give me time. I'll have to talk it over. We'll talk nothing over. But you and I'll meet again. Wait. I didn't say I was turning down your proposition. I made no proposition. But you've told me enough. You'll never find Jerry if I can help it. No, no, wait. Hey, come on back here. Oh, Riding away. I've got to find that fellow. Get him back. Abe, where in places have you been? Look, boss. Never mind. Wanna... Don't stop to explain now. Get back in the saddle. That fellow who just left here, he knows where Jerry is. Get him and bring him back. He said he knew where the young one was? Yes, yes, right. <laughs> don't stand there laughing, you fool. Didn't you hear my orders? Boss, that fellow don't know a blame thing. I found the kid and the widow woman he was staying with this afternoon. And I got him tied up outside right now. You have? But you gotta back me up if I get in trouble, boss. Trouble? Yeah. A redskin tried to stop me and I had to hit him over the head. Maybe I hit him too hard. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, racing away from Grove Center, headed Silver for the place where Tonto had been told to meet him. When he reined in, however, there was no sign of the faithful Indian. Oh, Silver! Oh, boy! Silver! Tonto wasn't here, Silver. What's keeping him? He should have reached here first. <coughs> he left some sign if he'd been here. Old fellow, we're heading on for Hillsboro. We may meet Tonto on the way. Come on, Silver! Hail, Silver! Last man, thundering toward Mrs. Martin's cottage, did not know that he was riding away from the young widow. At that moment, while the frightened boy watched with wide open eyes, and Abe looked on with a grin, she was bravely confronting the man named King. You beast. I know the whole thing now. Jerry's told me the whole story. How you killed his father, beat him to keep him from talking, made his life so miserable he had to run away. If I were only a man, I'd take a whip to you just like you did to that poor boy. That does it. Abe. Yeah, boss? This woman's mouth has got to be closed. She knows to blame much. You wouldn't dare. You kept after the kid he talked, eh? You got on the good side of him, sneaked it out of him, did you? Well, you see what good it does you. What do you aim to do, boss? Anybody see you bring her here? Of course not. I don't take chances. How about at Hillsboro? Were you seen there? Just by the engine. You said you finished him. Well, I think I did, boss. I hit him an awful whack over the head. If he lives... Even so, what's there to worry about? His word ain't good for anything he can get a white man's. It's just these two here, the kid and the female. I'll take care of Jerry. Yeah? And you'll see that the woman doesn't talk. How? A bullet will do it. No, no. Grab her. Try to get away, will you? You You can't. No, let me go. Let me go, you beast. She's a wildcat, boss. I've never seen a wildcat yet. Lead wouldn't tame. It's dangerous. You said you weren't seen. We're clearing out anyhow. No one knows who we are or where we came from. There'll be questions. And we won't be here to answer them. Now get going. Get her out of here. Where to? Wherever a shot won't be heard. On your way. Right. Come on. There. Well, Jerry, so you ran away from me, did you? Please, don't hit me. Please. You didn't like it on the ranch. No. You didn't like the whip, eh? Oh, don't whip me again. <laughs> so Please you remember. Don't. Here, see this whip? Recognize it? No, no, don't hit me. <laughs> I brought it along just thinking it might come in handy again one of these days. Don't whip me, please. You snivel and calf. Watch. Watch the leg of that table. <laughs> See that? <laughs> Remember how that whip fell on your back? Please. Oh, please. If you don't want no. any more of the same, just keep this in mind. One word of what's happened here or any place else, and I'll wrap this whip around you till you wish you were dead. No. Understand that you're sorry you were ever born. Yeah. There. Remember. <laughs> As he neared Hillsboro without having yet caught sight of Tonto, the masked man's anxiety increased. Finally, he reined in before the widow's cottage. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh boy. No lights inside and the door left open. Tonto, Mrs. Martin, are you here, Jerry? The table, those chairs. There's been a fight here. Jerry slept in this room. No one here. Tonto, Mrs. Martin, Jerry! The lamp... Here. Someone was hit. That stain. Those horses, that may be them. That's you, Tonto. Where have you been? I want him, Sheriff. We got you, mister. Oh, your hands are full. I still want him. What's this for? You're under arrest. Watch the skunk deputies. You bet we will. I demand to know what this arrest is for. Don't try to talk your way out of it. Take a look around you. You savvy what fur well enough. You didn't think anybody heard you when you was here before, did you? We got you dead to rights. Job Simons heard the widow young come hunting us up. We figured we'd have to trail you. But this just saves us the trouble. Sheriff, how long ago did Job here, Mrs. Martin? Oh, two hours, I reckon. We was out of town and it took him a while to find us. What's that to you? He's likely trying to figure out a way to alibi himself, Sheriff. Well, it won't do him no good. You're making a mistake. Wait, Wait. Ma- Someone else is responsible for this, and I, I know who. Slip out of it, huh? Who do you say is responsible? A man by the name of King. If he didn't do it himself, he had it done. Ah, it. you're just... What trying... motive would I have? Robbery, of course. Mr. Martin had no money. Why would I steal from her? Or you didn't know she was bad off till you searched the place. Sheriff, I came here looking for a friend of mine. I haven't been in this neighborhood for two days. You got proof of that? No, but I have proof of something else. Look there. Those stains on the floor. Someone was hurt and hurt badly. If there was, you'll hang for it. I came here to meet Tuttle. He's an Indian friend of mine. 
And, Sheriff, I'm positive he was the one who was injured. Go on. You said you could prove it. He's either injured or killed. Or Mrs. Martin would never have been taken. What kind of proof do you call that? Perhaps it doesn't convince you, but it's enough for me. Sheriff, while you're standing here wasting your time, Mrs. Martin and the boy are in danger. Huh? What boy? There's been a boy in the cottage here for the past week. That's the reason for this attack. King has been after the boy, and now he's got him. Sheriff, that shows he's lying. There ain't been no young in here. If there had been, we'd have noted. I ain't arguing no more, stranger. Raise your hands. No, you can take off that mask first. We'll see what you look like. My friend has been injured, Sheriff. That don't make You're no difference. You're not going to stop me from learning what's happened to him. Here, Silver, at them. You busted the lamp. You can't see. And here comes that horse of his. Watch out. Watch out. He don't plant At them, old fellow. Let's go, boy. Grab the mask, man. Where is he? I ain't getting in the way of them folks. All right, Silver. You find him. Follow me, Sheriff. That's just what I want you to do. Come on, Silver. Shoot, shoot him. Miss. They're around the corner. The saddle, mount up. Don't let that fool cat get out of sight. Hurry, Dad, ride it into the saddle. Oh, Silver, it seemed clear to the masked man that only King would have a reason to kidnap the widow and the boy. Therefore, it was toward Grove Center that he directed Silver's flying hoofs. He wanted the law on hand, however, when he confronted King and held the great stallion to a pace that permitted the lawmen to keep him in sight. King had not yet left his cabin. With Dell and Jerry, he waited for Abe to return and... Why in thunder doesn't Abe get back? You can't blame him for playing it safe, can you? Playing it safe? He's had time enough to take that woman where no one could hear a cannon fired. Well, Abe knows what he's doing. Yes, and he knows the sooner we leave here, the better. Shucks, there ain't no use getting head up. Nothing could have gone wrong. They better not. The widow couldn't have broken loose. Even she did. Abe had a horse and she didn't. She wouldn't have got for her. Well, I suppose. See, there's Abe now. There wasn't nothing to worry about at all. Then grab the kid. We'll be on our way. Yeah. What's you! It? It's me, King. You! You're the fellow I met up with on the trail today. And I met your boss before, too. King, what's happened to... There you are, Jerry. Yes, sir. Jerry, what's happened to Toto and Mrs. Martin? Where are they? Hurry, Jerry, talk. <laughs> the kid isn't talking. Jerry, you've got to tell me what happened. He, he'll hit me. Shut up. Just one word out of you and... And what? Take your hands off me. The boy's too frightened to talk. You'll talk and fast. Let's me go. There he is. Sheriff, you ain't getting away from us this time, Mr. Mastermind. Sheriff, I'm glad you got here. Put that switch below and reach. Arrest this man, Sheriff. I'm doing that. Sheriff. No, you don't. Hey, let go. Let rattle it, Roy. Now you'll follow my orders. Sheriff, the life of my friend, the life of Mrs. Martin may be at stake. Neither you nor anyone else is going to interfere. Remember that. If you feel like closing your finger on that trigger, Blast I'll you. shoot it out if you force me to it. Go ahead and talk. You'll hang later. I told you at the cottage that this man here was after the boy who'd been staying with Mrs. Martin. You didn't believe me at the time, but here's the boy I meant. And it won't be hard to get at the truth. If the kid was at the cottage, he can tell us what happened. Gentlemen, you can ask the boy anything you wish. I don't know what this masked fellow's talking about. And I'm quite sure that Jerry will tell you not only that he isn't acquainted with any Mrs. Martin, but he hasn't been out of my sight. Is that right, young'un? Go ahead, Jerry. Tell them you've been with me. King, you're putting the answer into the boy's mouth. I reckon he knows where he's been. Go on, Jerry. Tell them. I, I've been here. <laughs> you see? Ever meet up with a young widow woman by the name of Martin, young fella? Tell the sheriff no, Jerry. Don't be afraid of the truth. No. Just what I thought. Sheriff, the child won't tell the truth because he's afraid of this man. Here, look at this whip. The boy's been beaten with this. No wonder he won't tell the truth. <laughs> sheriff, this fella's crazy. Mm. The young'un has been acting scared like. Naturally, when the pack of you burst into the cabin with drawn guns, what could you expect? If he's been whipped, there'd be marks. You're welcome to look. They were there a week ago, Sheriff. But if King is willing to let you look now, that means they've completely healed up. <laughs> Sheriff, I confess I don't know what this is all about. It does seem to me, however, that if you have any charges against this masked man, you shouldn't have difficulty making them stick. I'm thinking the same. Your bluff's run out, stranger. You might just as well come along peaceable. King hasn't won out yet, Sheriff. Shucks, what's the use in making a fuss out of it? You know I got my duty to do, and I'll do it even if you are set on gunplay. There's five of us here and just one of you. Why don't you surrender? Not yet. I've got one more way of securing the truth. What are you going to do with that whip? You gave me the idea, King. You put that... The whip has kept Jerry's mouth closed. Well, I'm going to use it to open yours. Stay back. Cut that out. Sheriff, if you're going to shoot, start shooting now. Because nothing in the world is going to stop me learning what's happened to Tonto. Watch out. There it is, King. The whip you used on Jerry. Make up your mind. 
talker get the same medicine you gave him? Stay back! Get me! She talked the local fool! He could lay it right open with that whip! Stay back! Stay back, Sheriff! Rush him! He can't get more than one shot in. You stop! Oh, oh, Are you safe, Harry? It's the oh. winner! Where have you been, Tonto? That cut on your head, are you all right? Uh, me all right. Me trail crook. Last engine, let loose of me! You, you stand still! Tonto, I was afraid you might have been killed. This fellow hit Tonto. Then Tonto trail him. You followed him afterwards? Uh, and him not get way. Well, doggone, where'd you come from, Mrs. Martin? We were just arresting this mask feller and planning on making him tell where you was. That's the man to arrest, Sheriff. Huh, him? Don't move, King. No, you don't. Don't listen to her, Sheriff. Sheriff. My thunder, I am listening. Maybe I've come near making a doggone fool out of myself. Sheriff, the masked man is my friend. He and Tonto have been trying to learn about the boy while I've been taking care Sleeping of him. Sleeping catfish. Then the young'un was at your place. This man here has been looking for the boy. One of his men found us. And if Tonto hadn't trailed him, I would have been killed at King's orders. Mister, you and your pards are going to hang. You can't prove The witness I... word will stand up in court any time. You want more evidence, Sheriff? Wait until Jerry's ready to talk. Then you'll have more than just a case of attempted murder. Yeah? These men murdered Jerry's father. King, the boy's guardian, planned to steal his estate. Jerry told me the whole thing. When the young'un's over his scare, that'll make the case airtight. One thing more, Sheriff. Uh When King is punished, Jerry will be needing another guardian. I suggest you use your influence to have the court appoint Mrs. Martin. The boy needs her, and it'll give her a secure home. That's a blame good idea. Should I handcuff these fellows, Sheriff? I reckon so, just to play safe. But they'll be stretching hemp so doggone soon it don't hardly seem worth the trouble. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Mm-hmm.